Hello and welcome to my 16th video lesson in using Blender 2.6. This video will be my first video in which I'll be using Blender 2.61, which has a really cool new feature, and it's called Cycles. Um, Cycles is a brand new render engine for Blender. Um, up until now, we'll be, we've been using the old Blender render. And what a render engine does is, in your scene, if you have objects, which you probably do, uh, and you have a camera, which you probably do, and lights, um, in which, well, by default, Blender comes with one lamp in the scene. Um, what rendering is, is it'll calculate the light coming off, off of your light, hitting objects in your scene, and then light bouncing from objects into your camera. So it's really acting like your eye. Uh, so when I press render image, what it's going to do is it's going to draw a picture from the camera's perspective of the objects, but it has to calculate all of that light hitting objects in the, and going into the camera. Now, of course, in the real world, um, light bounces around, and this is a very complicated thing for computers to do. And the old Blender render engine, which is with the image or the render engine that I'm using right now, um, didn't do the best of jobs, as you can see, because um, in the real world, um, light bounces in very kind of complicated ways. Light can bounce from object to object, um, so that, um, unlike this image, we wouldn't have entire sides of objects entirely black when there's an, a light in the scene. Um, by default in Blender, if you have a lamp in a scene, um, even though there's a lamp, the far side of objects away from the lamp will be black, and that's because light isn't directly hitting them. But of course in the real world we have bouncing light, so if there's a floor, light would kind of bounce onto the floor and then hit the back of objects, lighting them up. But that isn't happening by default. The new Cycles render engine, if I turn my render engine to Cycles, um, is quite a bit different over here. Um, but if I press F12, and this is going to act a lot, lot slower. By default, it doesn't look too great, but at least it does have um, bouncing light. It doesn't have really harsh black edges. In fact, everything in this scene looks quite um, kind of soft right now. The light is very soft. It's not very hard light. Um, but we're actually not, not going to talk about the Cycles Render Engine today. I want to show you how to make your renders look really good, uh, just within the old Blender render. And in a future video, we'll talk about the Cycles Render Engine. So as you can see by default, my scene doesn't look very good. The back sides of all the objects are totally black. And I'm going to save this image, just to come kind of refer to it when we make the scene look better. So I'll go to Save as Image, and Save to my desktop. And I'm going to save this as 001.png. So, 001.png. And I'll save that as an image file. And I'll press Escape to get rid of my render window. Now, to make this scene look better, in other words, to get some light on the back side of objects, because we only have one lamp in our scene, there it is, um, we can go to our World tab and turn on what's called Ambient Occlusion. Ambient Occlusion is how Blender calculates, or fakes, or kind of fakes calculating, um, how light bounces around your scene. Just by turning Ambient Occlusion on, if I go ahead and press F12, or I go to my camera tab and press render image. Because F12 does not work on Max um, by default, on Max I think F12 um, uses the, or is set to use, or, or trigger the peak or the expose function. On Max you can go to just the camera and render image, but I'm going to be using F12. Um, so as you can see, because I've turned ambient occlusion on, the scene is a whole lot, not necessarily brighter, but it has kind of calculated how light is going to be bouncing around our scene a little bit better. I'm going to go to Image and Save As Image and press the plus to change the 001 to 002. And I'll press Save As Image File. And now we can really compare. I'll press Escape. And I'm going to go and look at that image. There is 001.png and there is 002. So I'll go back and forth. Uh, and it's quite a bit of a difference. This will really improve your rendering if um, up until now you've just been rendering without ambient occlusion turned on. Uh, it's a world of difference. Now you can turn ambient occlusion up and down uh, incrementally. So if I go back into Blender, I can turn the factor of ambient occlusion down to 0 0.5. And of course, it'll make the scene a little bit darker. Um, but 
maybe more to your liking. So when you have ambient occlusion turned on, however, it will make your image kind of speckly. Uh, you'll see that it is, does kind of look um, grainy. Um, and we can fix that, but it will slow down your render times. Now, this is kind of the, one of the big caveats of turning on ambient occlusion. If you're used to very kind of quick render times, um, ambient occlusion will slow down the amount of time that it takes to render uh, each frame of a movie or your image um, quite a bit. So uh, playing with any of these settings will slow down your rendering quite a bit, but cycles is even quite a bit slower than that. Um, so we turn ambient occlusion down. I'm going to go ahead and render that out again. And it got more grainy, or it just appeared more grainy because it's a little bit darker. Um, so I'm going to save that image as 003.png, and we'll compare. You have to excuse my throat. I have a throat cold, but I want to make a video because it's been about two weeks. Um, so there is the first image. It has no ambient occlusion. That is the same scene with ambient occlusion turned fully on. And there is the scene at 0 0.5. Now you'll notice that because the scene got a little bit darker, some of the graininess in the dark areas got a little bit more pronounced. Um, so we will fix that. But of course, that will cause the render time to go up, which is not always ideal, but you'll get a better image. So we turn the ambient occlusion on. Um, and when we turn that on, the gather area, also under the world tab, kind of became accessible. And by default, the number of samples, in other words, um, the number of times it kind of ran through the scene to calculate how the light was bouncing, is turned to 5. And if we turn that number up, the graininess will go away. So I'm going to turn this up to 10, and I'll press F12. And of course, the time it takes to render this frame will, take, will go up. but the graininess will go down. And of course, I could turn this up well beyond 10. I can go up to 20 or 30 or 100, but that might even crash my computer. So I'm not going to go up higher than 10. In fact, I might even go back down to 5 for the sake of this video. So there's the image. I'm going to save this image as 004.png. PNG is an image file, by the way. It's a compressed but lossless image file type. So there is the scene with no ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion at 1, at 0 0.5, with um, 5 samples, so it's quite a bit grainy. Um, and with 10 samples, it's quite a bit less grainy. You can see it especially underneath the um, UV sphere. So I'll go back to the 5 samples. The graininess goes up. And at 1 sample, I'm not sure that you can actually see it, there's quite a bit less graininess in the scene, which is ideal. But, of course, the moment more that you turn that up, the slower your renders will be. So if you change the gather type from ray trace to approximate, I'm going to get rid of that render by pressing escape. If I turn that to approximate away from ray trace, um, it will speed up quite a bit, especially if your scene is very complicated, if you have a lot of geometry in your scene. So if I press F12, it doesn't do as good or as accurate of a job, but it is a kind of good way to see how bright and where the light is in your scene, and if you have to make any changes to it. Uh, you will notice, though, that it, because it is doing a much more approximate version of how light is bouncing around your scene, um, there will be some problems, like um, on this side of this uh, UV sphere, it's black where it shouldn't be. Um, and so that's where you would really want to use ray trace with a, with, a, with a high number of samples. But approximate does a pretty good job. I'm going to save this as an image and I'll save it as 005.png, just to compare. Um, but then the nice thing about using approximate over ray trace, not only is it, is it a lot, lot faster, um, but you also get no greenness at all. It doesn't try to calculate the light bouncing in a very accurate way. Um, that would produce some greenness, um, but it isn't as accurate as we can see. So I'm going to go back to my desktop and show you kind of the progression. There is no ambient occlusion. There is ambient occlusion at at full strength with five samples. There is at half strength, so 0 0.5, with five samples. At half strength with 10 samples. And that is with approximate gather turned on. So going back between 10 samples 
and approximate, you'll see that there is some problems uh, in some areas, but it's much, much better than obviously our first image. Um, so it's really up to you how far you take it. Um, the next step in this scene, I'm going to leave this on, oh, we'll leave it on, an, on approximate for now. I'm going to create a better lighting system. I only have one light in my scene right now, um, but of course that would not be ideal. So I'm going to go to my top view. I actually haven't set up my keyboard shortcuts quite yet, so I'm going to do that really quickly. There we go, emulate numpad. Excuse me. So now, if I press 7, I can go to my top view. There's my camera, there's my lamp. But of course, this lighting setup is not ideal. And an ideal lighting setup, or at least a very common one that they often use, um, is called a three-point lighting setup, which means they have three lights. Um, and the first light is going to be the key light. Um, and I'm going to put that kind of in front, but off to the side of the camera. And I'm going to duplicate this light. Oopsie. I'm going to duplicate that light by pressing Shift-D. There we go. Computer's not acting too well today. And I'll put that lamp there now. If I were to have two lights that were at the default brightness, my scene would be much too bright. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that light down. So I'm going to have that light selected and go to my lamp tab. And I'll turn the energy down to maybe 0.6. And my original lamp, maybe I'll turn it down a little bit too, to 0.8. And because it's a three-point lighting system, I'm going to make one more lamp by duplicating my second lamp, and it's going to be in behind the object. So this is kind of a three-point lighting setup. We want to have one lamp uh, on either side of the camera, but in front of the, the camera, um, one near to the camera than the, than the other one. You can put that one over there. Um, and my key light is going to be brighter, and it should be the only one that casts shadows. Um, so before I get there, though, I'm going to turn this lamp down a little bit, maybe down to 0 0.5. Now, this lamp, I believe, is going to be our key light, and it will be the only one that casts shadows. So how can we turn shadows off on the other two lamps? Well, if I select a lamp, go to my lamp object data, I can actually say no shadow under the shadow tab. Same thing with my... Um, backlight. I'm going to turn it to have no shadows. So the only time uh, there will be shadows is from that lamp right there. And I can press F12. And my scene takes a little bit longer to render, but it actually looks pretty darn good. Now, of course, this is just a very basic scene. Um, but that's how I would start creating light in my scene. Obviously, if I go to image uh, save as image, and we're going to compare our final results. So there is my first image, which looked pretty bad. I'm going to scroll all the way to the end, and that's my final result. So my final result, maybe I'll go ahead and delete all my kind of in-between ones, so I can switch back and forth really easily. There is my starting image, and there is the final one. A huge difference. Um, that's going to be everything for this video. Until next time, I'll see you later. Thanks a lot. Bye.